photos of fallen officer Jonathan Diller were on display outside of his wake today. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. The final wake for the NYPD officer is tonight. Now, police gathered at Massapequa Park Funeral Home to remember the 31-year-old. He leaves behind a wife and a one-year-old son. The last five days have been a living nightmare for this family. This is a close-knit family dedicated to service. All police officers across this city are heartbroken. And we're going to be there for this family every step of the way. Governor Kathy Hochul briefly attended the wake today and met with Diller's family. Hochul reportedly left after 10 minutes and was confronted by a man outside of the funeral home. Tributes have been pouring in for the officer, including at City Field during the Mets home opener. He was shot and killed during a traffic stop earlier this week. The alleged gunman, Guy Rivera, has been charged with murder in the shooting. The driver of the car, 41-year-old Lindy Jones, is facing weapons charges and is being held without bail. Officer Diller's funeral will be tomorrow at St. Rose of Lima Roman Catholic Church in Massapequa. He'll be laid to rest at St. Charles Cemetery in Farmingdale. And a truck slammed into a train overpass in Center Moore Ridges. The truck ended up on its side. You can see it there. And police say it happened on Montauk Highway near Old Neck Road this afternoon. The MTA says trains were operated at a reduced speed in the area. There's no word, though, on any injuries. And the town of Oyster Bay is looking for a new inspector general. Now, this comes as the former inspector general, Brian Noon, is being investigated by the Nassau DA. Now, Noon resigned three weeks after a news report found he recommended a $2 million contract for a vendor with ties to his private business. The job pays between $125,000 and $165,000. And hundreds of Catholics are gathering for an annual Holy Day tradition. Macy Eglin has more in Westbury. Long Island's faithful coming together at Cemetery of the Holy Rood in Westbury for the annual Stations of the Cross prayer service. It's, it's a time where we get together regardless of faiths to be able to understand that his coming and his dying was for all of humankind. Of the four Catholic cemeteries of Long Island, this is the only one with all 14 stations outdoors, portraying the events of Christ's last days on earth. They've held the prayer service for more than 30 years, and Catholics come from across the island to take part. It's important. It's, it's part of the faith. It's just nice to come together and worship as a community. You see the amount of people who came out today. Today is Good Friday, one of the most solemn days on the Christian calendar. Organizers say this is a really powerful event. Green emphasizes for them the importance of their faith. And it helps them to understand that there truly is a divine being. Whichever we believe in. Being here with other people, it just uh, affirms that faith. So it's a, it's a very moving experience. Reporting for Newsday TV, I'm Macy Eglund. St. Anne's Parish is also drawing crowds for its Stations of the Cross reenactment. A police escort led the way to the Brentwood Church, and worshippers say this annual event draws in thousands of people from neighboring towns each year. And another friendlies on Long Island has closed its doors. The Ronkonkoma restaurant served its last Sunday on Thursday. It joins half a dozen other locations that have already shut down. There are 10 friendlies locations still open on Long Island. And experts say it's costing you more for your favorite sweet treats this year. Sherry Einhorn explains why. Step into a bakery just before Easter and... <sighs> Enjoy the sights and the smells. Oh, wait, you can't smell. Hang on. Oh, smell. The sweetness. You just know it's going to be delicious. These confectionery creations are ready to hop off the shelves here at Dortoni's Bakery in Levittown and onto your holiday table. We really love it here. We come for every holiday, like every, even on weekends, just we have, you know, we love this place. No, not that one. The longer one. Yeah, yeah, the longer okay. One. 
But these delectable delights are costing bakers more this year. That's because the price of sugar, eggs, and cocoa are higher. It's just an impact on profit, really. We really haven't uh, passed it along yet. We're trying our best to hold back. It is still sprinkles of sugar and spice and everything nice here at Familia Bakery in Central Islip. Before COVID, we had, you know, this price is set and um, after COVID, you know, it's been a month that goes up, another month that goes down. Customers still want their favorites, though. According to the National Retail Federation, more than $7 billion will be spent on food for Easter this year. We're going to do a lot of cake pops. We're going to do a lot of uh, plans, tres leches. Back in Levittown, longtime customers say when it comes to these sweet treats, sometimes it's just impossible to decide. Okay, which are your favorite for Easter? Uh, the... Yeah. All of them, all of it. <laughs> we have a you can't family. decide. We have a very big family. From old timers to first timers, the appeal here is clear by the line that never seems to end. This is my first time hearing of it and been here, so it's very nice. I like the little presentation. It's all different types of treats and everything. I think you'll come back for Easter? I hope so. In Levittown, I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. You had me at Tres Leches. Now, to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More from the Newsday TV video box. Comeback complete for the Empress. The Lindenhurst boxer was victorious in the ring last night, and Jamie Stewart has part three of a story you'll see only in Newsday. Once I get in the ring and I get that first fight out of the way, I could say I did it. I climbed the second mountain. I made it to the top. Honestly, it feels like my debut when I when I turn pro. I feel like uh, it's came full circle and I'm back here but better. I'm not scared. So going in that ring, I'm going in with so much more than I ever went before. Alicia's opponent is Philadelphia's Isabel Lopez, and her fight is part of the Team Combat League event. She has just one round to prove she still has it. Alicia Espinosa. Alicia dominated the opening moments of the fight, and then, a little over a minute in, came the punch nearly four years in the making. I cannot even explain the magnitude of the amazing, wonderful emotions I feel by knocking my opponent down. It was more than just a knockdown. For Alicia, who at one time was down for the count, fought her way back and became the fighter and mother she always wanted to be. It's finally over with. I finally ripped the Band-Aid off. I worked so hard for four years to get back to this point. What are you gonna tell your family and your daughters when you get home? I, I did it for you, baby. I did it for you. For Newsday TV, I'm Jamie Stewart. You love to see it. Now to read more about the Empress, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. There seems to be a lot of buzz around this wood-fired pizza and Italian market in Garden City Park. Erica Marcus has today's Feed Me TV. I like to say that my phone is 17.5% pizza photos. Amazing but true, I get paid to document Long Island's burgeoning pizza scene. Today, we're at Samsone Market in Garden City Park to experience the pizza stylings of Augie Russo. So the Miss Betty White starts like all of our white pizzas and a couple of our other pizzas. 
with a little house made preserved lemon. We stain them pink with some rose petals. So it's a little floral, it's a little salty. Rose petals, peck and palm, gruyere, salted red onion, blistered cherry tomato, seasoned zucchini. And it gets a little fresh mozz just around the edges. What explains how you can devote your every waking hour to pizza? I dream about it too, actually. I don't just have to be awake to be thinking about pizza. Look at that beautiful yes. Betty White that's heaving. You see where the mozz is on the outside uh -huh. here? So every slice gets it's got a little bit of the mozz at the crust line. It's got the Gruyere mix in there. Oh, and, and there go pomegranate, pomegranate seeds. seeds. I mean, for that much stuff on a pizza, for it to not be a yeah. sloppy wet mess is yeah. pretty nice. There are some notes in here that you don't expect, but that doesn't mean that they don't work. Right on, and that's when I say, they, the preserved lemons have no business being on a pizza. They don't have any well, business. Well, you say they, that, but you have demonstrated the opposite. They work really nicely on a pizza. I love them. And now I have almost 50 photos and videos of Tiny Pizza Kitchen on my phone. Oh, hold on. That's a Chinese banquet at Orient Garden. Now that is a passion for pizza. And for more on this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Now let's take a look at your gorgeous weekend Long Island weather. Take a look at this. All right, it's going to be chilly tonight. That's fine. But tomorrow, temps in the mid 50s. We're talking sun. We're talking clouds. We're talking Saturday and Sunday with this lovely weather. So if you're hiding eggs, it's going to be a great day for it. Here's your seven day forecast. Let's ignore Monday through Thursday and just enjoy what we have, which is a beautiful, gorgeous weekend. Long Island weather is brought to you by Home Tax Saver, PTRC Incorporated. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good weekend.